Rob Rinder has dealt with injustice in the courtroom for years, but now he's turning his attention to tackling housing inequality. The barrister and TV judge believes it's one of the most critical issues of the mo moment and he's urging the Prime Minister to honour his pledge to deliver a renters' reform bill. Uh, and he joins us now. It's good to be here. It's lovely to see and you. Thank you for having me to highlight this problem, which is about all of our communities and all of our neighbours. You know, there are millions of our neighbours who live in private rented accommodation who uh, fear eviction. The reason they fear eviction is because they're terrified to go to their landlord and say that they live in hazardous homes. And mm -hmm. if you don't think the numbers are high, mm -hmm. there are four million of our neighbours living in rented accommodation who live uh, in homes that are dangerous. Uh, I'm going to emphasise that, dangerous. And, mm. and four million um, also uh, who live in accommodation that need urgent repair. But what happens is that they are scared to go to their landlord because the landlord can retaliate. And even though um, it's clear what the law is, the uh, landlord can say, thanks very much, um, we don't want you here anymore, and they can serve a Section 21 no-fault eviction notice. The Renters' Reform Bill asks two simple things, and it's a critical thing for any decent landlord and for, frankly, any decent society. The first one is, if you're a landlord, let's have good landlords, which is most landlords, on a national register to prove and demonstrate you've got a safe home and you're a decent person. Bearing in mind the number of people who have private homes that they rent out, that should be a straightforward mm -hmm. thing. And if you're a good landlord, you should want to be on that register. And the second thing we're asking for is to end Section 21, no fault eviction, so that people don't find themselves, as millions of people do, being terrified in their homes to complain on the basis that the landlord can come along and say, you know what, I'm going to put up the rent. You know what, I'm going to remove you and your children. I looked at a case this morning of a 52-year-old woman. She's a key worker. She looks after disabled children. She lived in her home for 12 years. Mm. That home wasn't just not fit for purpose. The boiler blew up. Mm. There was mould. She was living there in circumstances where she had to go and get up every day to support our most vulnerable communities. And yet she couldn't complain for the terror that she would be evicted. That's just not OK. No. It represents the worst of who we are, when we could represent the best of who we are. That's why I'm supporting Shelter today. Yeah. And their incredibly important work. Well, you're, and you're an ambassador for Shelter, so you're using your voice um, very powerfully on this. I don't know if you've seen, Rob, the mm. uh, work that um, ITV News' is political correspondent Daniel Hewitt has done in investigating social housing conditions. I mean, th these are people who live in the London borough of Croydon, uh, my home area, um, and he says he was inundated with hundreds and hundreds of examples. I mean, particularly we're seeing here severe mould and damp. You know, what is happening if, if our social housing mm -hmm. is, is this kind of level? Because these are the, the poorest amongst us and we need to start having this conversation, right? This is about housing. Um, but this is something we need to think about. And it, it also goes to what we're talking about in football as well, right? Um, the people who live in that social housing have the least access to power, the least elbow, the least people that can influence any change. The same thing happens in people, with people who are in private rented accommodation. You know, and here's the thing, those communities in Bolsover, those communities in Sedgefield have precisely the same issues of, as communities in South Lambert, uh, as in Croydon, and they need to be yeah. united, they need to be uh, protected. It's time that we looked after the poorest and most vulnerable and gave them the tools that they need to threaten power. It's you've you've always been very articulate in giving a voice to those people who don't uh, have one. I mean, you know, through Judge Rinder, that's, mm -hmm. that's the purpose of, of that show, of course. And it struck me um, recently that, of course, you were the victim of crime as well. You were uh, mm -hmm. mugged quite recently uh, for your phone. And, um, but th your response to that was incredibly compassionate towards those people who'd attacked you. Mm -hmm. Well, I felt sorry for them. I mean, but really? let, well, let me be clear. First thing is, look, I'm a person of privilege. What does that mean? Um, it, in my case, it's, uh, I've got money. That means that I've got access to insurance. That meant it cost me 100 quid and I got my phone back mm. um, the next day. Uh, my compassion wasn't that I am some sort of hand wringer that thinks these people shouldn't be punished. Of course they could. But I've sat at a table opposite those boys 
who start with mobile phones and then graduate to something worse. Mm. And when I looked into the faces of people that have graduated to really serious crime, I looked into the face of tragedy. They were bright, articulate, very often emotionally literate young men that found themselves caught up in the gangs. Now, here's the thing. Um, of course, there are other choices. Just because you're poor, just because you live in bad social housing, it is right to say that you don't have to get caught up in the gangs. But I urge anybody with that point of view to go and spend some time there. And so what would you... Well, crime is, has gone up. Sorry to interrupt you, mm. Adil. I mean, you know this. <laughs> I mean, uh, crime has gone up uh, in these parts of London because they've been all but forgotten about by yeah. the gangs. No, absolutely. What would you do then? It's, it's a really interesting point you make, but, but what's the punishment, if indeed there is any punishment? What would you, if, if these per per perpetrators were caught, you had a mm. call from the police, and the mm. police said, we've found your phone, we've found the three guys who stole it. What, what would you like to see done to them? <laughs> you know, what would your decision Me or what I, Well, here's yeah. the thing. Right. Uh, firstly, they, they have to be punished. Is prison the answer for them? It depends uh, on how many times they've done it and that mm. sort of thing. Mm. Um, Here's the thing as well that's important to remember. Uh, most people who are the victims of crime uh, live in our poorest communities. Absolutely. Right, yeah. so I would want to go to those poorest communities who are most likely to be affected by crime and to ask them, what are their priorities? What are their policing needs? And for all of local police to have an ongoing presence and conversation. And if you really want to solve crime, you galvanise communities to get them involved. And they can be the answer mm. to high levels of crime. There was a gang case many years ago. It was a drive-by shooting, and people thought there was nothing they could do. And at that point, communities, chiefly communities of women, I might add, and religious communities, got together and said no. And they worked alongside, hand in hand, with the police. Mm. And for about a generation, they stopped gang violence mm. in that community. It's mm. time communities were listened to, especially communities of the poor. And it's also time that people in leadership and people across the political spectrum stop dividing those communities mm. through reasons which we know about, cynical reasons, mm. when people who don't have access of, to power come from every background, every racial group, mm. every cultural group, mm. and they have infinitely more in common. The chief thing they have in common is they don't have access to power. And that's true as well mm. of those who are in private rented accommodation. It's one of the highest causes of homelessness. It's time we restored the capacity for people to have power to make meaningful change. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting you say that, actually, because I've been waiting for the moment to talk about this. But when, we, when we've talked about Black Lives Matter and the race debate, really, at the bottom, that we're just supporting poor people, people who don't have power. That's what it is. And I think when we, when we talk about Black Lives Matter, it's supporting all people of poverty who, who, who don't have opportunity of any race or colour or culture. Well, Essentially, that is the problem, isn't it? And, and this is what you've highlighted here with the... Very, very issues. dangerous for me to get um, uh, drawn into that space. I'm not a person of colour. What I will tell you is this. I mm. get letters every single day. And the thing that's clear to me is the common experience of white communities in the north of England and black communities and communities of colour in challenged communities across, for example, London. Yeah. And their common element yeah. is, just as I'm going to repeat, their access to justice, their access to reform, their access to power to change their lot in life. Mm. And there's so much more that they have yeah. in common, and it's time that we thought about and Absolutely. fought for the things they have in common rather than the, than the things that divide them. As um, lockdown restrictions ease, you've managed to have access to other members of your family, mm -hmm. and we saw a lovely photograph of you. With oh, your and you, we went for a nice walk. Yes, we did. We went for a socially distanced walk, but you actually were able to go and see your grandma, weren't you? I know, my lovely grandma. Oh, his, oh. <laughs> beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Well, it beautiful. means so much for her as well, doesn't it? Um, she's she's uh, 93. She had uh, her first... Uh, well, she had her, her last 93rd birthday on her own. It's a year after my beloved papa uh, died. And, you know, she's completely delighted to, to see me. She's that sort of Jewish grandma, you can do <laughs> no wrong. I once asked her how to make a chicken soup because I knew that she would love it. Uh, she phoned me the next day, she goes, how did it go? I said, Grandma, you know, the chicken was hard. Of course, I've got no transferable skills. And uh, <laughs> she said, you take that chicken back to the butcher, they've sold you an old head. <laughs> it's impossible, I could do any wrong. Um, oh, yeah, so it was a real gift and... Um, for all of the grandparents, that amazing generation, who I think, as I said um, on social media, who understood what it was to put 
service above anything else, yeah. who just delight in their grandchildren. What a gift it is for us to be re reunited. Absolutely. And we delight in you being here. Oh, thank you. And hopefully this summer will be a little bit different for us. Oh, God willing. Oh, pardon me. Yeah. I'm going to get away yeah. at some stage. God willing. Yeah, orange, exactly right. You and an orange squash. We do, we're, 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 we're live on TV, just to let you know. Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rob, thank you very much, and uh, very good for you to have you here in your thank role you. as an ambassador for Shelter. Just what we were talking about there, about the, uh, the housing issues you've raised, in a statement, the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government have said we will repeal mm -hmm. Section 21 of the Housing Act 1988 to improve security for tenants and strengthen the rights of landlords and will bring forward legislation in due course. We have given councils strong powers to require landlords to make necessary repairs to their property. Uh, I know this discussion will continue. There'll be lots of difference in agreement, but we have to uh, give the government's side of the argument and we wait and see, see what the result of their actions are.